Okay, well, good morning, everyone. It's a uh, kind of a muggy Tuesday this February. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for telling me where to look. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> um, so just real quick, um, some little logistics about the show. First of all, um, if there's anything that you hear that you like or that you agree with, make sure that you're letting us know by giving the thumbs up, uh, giving us the hearts. Uh, if there's somebody that you think would enjoy uh, what we're talking about, please make sure to either tag them down in the comments or to share uh, the post out with everyone. And then as I ask questions or as the panel asks questions, there are also questions for you. So if you could be sure to um, answer uh, in the comment section so we can see it and read it. And then if you have questions for us, please, again, make sure to go ahead and put that into the comment section where we can read those off and answer your questions. Uh, so first I want to welcome everybody to the panel and introduce everyone. This is Leslie Richardson, who has a fabulous travel uh, agency where she books your cruises for you. We have Nancy Sabino, who has uh, her own IT company. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up that. Uh, Sabino CompTech, right? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Um, where she handles all of your IT problems. And then I have Alicia Alatasi, who is the owner of this fabulous boutique where we broadcast from. So thank you very much for joining us. And I have Randy Seifert, the fabulous Hollywood hippie uh, with Hollywood Hippie Cosmetics. Um, she's got some really great things that she's doing as well. So um, thank you, everyone who's joined. I've got Leah. I've got Miriam. Anna, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast today. Thank you. Um, so before I really get into it, I just want to let you guys know um, what the focus of the show is. Oh, yeah, Victoria is there. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks. Um, the focus of the show really is we're going to do a little bit of sharing. But there's also some information that's going to be shared. But then also um, we're talking about uh, what kind of change is happening, what, what's happening as a result of the Me Too and the Times Up campaigns. Um, you know, is it really, is there really change that's happening or is it, like I read this word the other day, is it slacktivism? Which is, I was like, oh, that's very interesting. But it's, it's the slackers that, you know, I shared, now I feel good, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Um, and feel like I've uh, had an impact when I really haven't done anything. So, the um, focus of the show really is on about discussing the change. Um, so, my question for you guys out there. And also for, um, Libby said that Brandy's amazing, yay. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, my question to the panel as well as you guys out there. Um, so raise your hand if you've ever had a Me Too moment. Like you could contribute to the Me Too moment. As in a story? As in ever. Like just like, you know, like you've had a Me Too moment. I'm not asking you to share necessarily, but like if you've ever experienced um, sexual harassment out in the workplace or out there. So yeah. anybody? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. In the last year? Mm -mm. In the last six months? No, when I was a teenager. Yeah. Um, so I know it's up to you, Brandy, because I know like you're the one who has the most recent experience. So it's up to you if you want to, you just want to kind of share um, any about the sure. experience. Sure. Um, well, it's interesting because I work, I work in the film industry, and that's kind of where a lot of that has really come up, even though that's not where it originated. So, um, I don't know where to start. Um, ugh, I don't know where I don't know where to go. That's okay. I'm like you just, just you, you can, it can be like I said. It's it's up to you if you want to share. Yeah. Because so I I kind of it's so for me it's a little different. Um, and I kind of understand um the frustration and confusion out there. So working in the film industry, especially here in Texas, I'm not in a union. I don't really need to be in one here. And there's really no one to protect me. Um, that's often how I felt. And I don't have an HR department. I don't have anyone to report to. Um. So, and I get how some of these people, again, and it's not really about the film world, but that's kind of where a lot of it got really big. Um, if, you, if, you are, if you do speak up, then it's your word against theirs, and then it becomes kind of like a gossip fest or whatever. But anyway, it happened to me. Um, I landed a job. It was really cool. It was going to be really big. was on the job. The producer um, made it obvious he wanted um, some sexual advances. I turned it down, and I lost the job. And I felt like I had no one to, and this was pretty recently, and I felt like I had no one to report it to um, because it, I really didn't. Although um, we'll get more into to that information later because I, anyway, I, what I want people to know is, is that um, there's always a way to get help and a way to be empowered, but I did feel attacked. 
And because what happens is people hear your story and they're like, well, speak up and do something about it. And I'm telling you, in, in that industry, you feel like you honestly and serious, you really feel like you can't because then you may lose your jobs. You may lose other opportunities. Um, is that is there any other thing you want yeah, me that's, to Yeah, that's good. Like I said, it's just it's whatever you wanted to share about. It's, and that's actually, I mean, that's a good point because – First of all, like a lot of times when you're speaking of it, it is, it's very much a he said, she said moment. Yeah. Um, it's something that's very hard to prove. And now you have a, 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 it's like being in high school and there's a bad rumor. Now, you, and it was right. like it's your industry. And now you have a bad rap maybe, and it wasn't even your fault. You didn't ask for it. And so you don't know what to do. But, but the point too is Hollywood is here too. Um, yeah. You know, well, and it doesn't what, happen just in the film industry, no, too. It's happening. Exactly. That's the other thing. It's you know, a lot there, of yeah, industries where. I just um, couldn't believe it happened like. Point blank, like right. I mean, it, just, it was <laughs> yeah. seriously. The guy was just. I just couldn't believe how bold it was. And I think that's one of the things that happens too is that we're not expecting it, and it kind of takes us off guard. And yeah, so you know, people wonder like, why you know, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I was like, because I'm in shock at the moment when right. it's happening. It's kind of like. What do I, I can't believe this. this I know. It's really like, happening. A couple hours wow. later, I'm like, yeah, I could have said this. I could have done that. I could and then, But in the moment, a lot of times it really yeah, is you're very. you're startled, I guess, in a sense. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And then the crazy. aftermath of it, too. A lot of times the woman isn't the person who is um, automatically believed, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Right. Um, Which is why. Yeah. Which why? Why are they not automatically believed? If they don't, I mean, who goes around lying all the time? And especially about something so personal and right. so um, intrinsic, yeah. and embarrassing. It's humiliating. Why degrading. would I even lie about something like that? So why are we always questioning these women and saying, mm. well, may, she might be lying or she's in it for something or she wants something else? That's exactly I was going to say. That's it. Yeah. Is like they look to see what's your ulterior motive your as ulterior to why motive? why you're doing uh, like why she you're wants doing to that. Or the opposite. Yeah. What are judged. you going to do about it? How are you going to, what are you going to do to overcome this? I don't know. I, I think it's a historical yeah. thing, though, too. A lot of times, you know, if you think about it, women were not in the workplace for, you know, since the beginning of time. Right. So it was more of, it was most industries for yeah. a long time were very male dominated. Mm -hmm. And as women came into it, then people start questioning when something like this comes up because mm -hmm. you're new to this space, so to speak. Yeah. And so I think it's kind of tr trickled down over the years. It's still kind of flex in that way but isn't um, it the worst when it's other women that are yes. questioning you yes. that hurts even more because i'm sure they've been you know in in that position before right. but they feel self-righteous they feel like they can judge they feel like they can come up and say we well you should have known better you should have not been dressed that way what were you wearing right you i know, know? like i, I mean thought, and oh to God. me it's like okay i get the men but why are other women being so nasty to each other instead of just listening and saying hey brandy what happened like you know what's going on and just listening to her without right. judgment without being like oh, what did you do what did you tell him but well, what are you gonna do exactly right. so, yeah. it's so embedded in our culture nowadays yes. that a yeah. lot of people don't even realize what is happening, when it's happening, or when they're hearing these stories. So it's it's crazy to me to realize and um, to think back on so many events. Like, was that what that was, or was it not? And mm -hmm. having to yeah. actually define, right. was that what it was? Was that assault? Was that harassment? And a lot of the times it becomes like, huh, I, I don't know. Well, I know and because to too, there's all there's mm -hmm. it's hard to process because sometimes when you think back on it, mm -hmm. like it's some of it because there's 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 varying degrees uh, on the spectrum of sexual harassment and being inappropriate and that kind of thing, misconduct. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of it, I think, falls in this whole grayish area where yeah. when you're going through it, you know what the intention yes. of the guy, you know. But then when you're back and you're relaying it, you're thinking over it again and you're explaining it to somebody, you're like, well, maybe I just was reading into it. Or maybe, maybe they say there, he was just probably flirting with you. Maybe he that's doesn't really get what he was doing. Romance is starred in Exactly. The and so that's where I think a lot of that comes from is from that it being sometimes it feels like it's almost subjective rather than it being objective right um and so that that makes this be a very kind of sticky area yeah. um so in researching for the show i found out um some some really uh some to me it was surprising i don't know maybe i'm the only person on the planet who didn't realize this but the me too hashtag I did not realize, so I'm just wondering, like, out there for you guys, how many of you realize that the Me Too hashtag is 10 years old? Like, it started 10 years ago. 
by a woman named Tarana Burke. And the reason why she started this was, I mean, just kind of gave me goosebumps the other day when I was reading it and then I shared it with uh, Brandon when we were talking on the phone. Uh, she started it because of her inability to assist an abused young girl mm -hmm. by merely saying, because of her own experience, she says, I, I found it really hard mm -hmm. to even utter the words, me too. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is just, I mean, like that was something that just yeah. to me was shocking number one and then just for that that being that kind of like holy wow that's where this started from and it's like and so that's some things that i wonder about with the me too um and the times up campaign is it it's 2018 for the love of all that is holy mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. this 10 years ago we were you know the equal rights amendment all of that kind of stuff is decades old and we're not any farther along yeah. so it's like is this is this the tipping point? Is this the movement we've been wanting or waiting for? Or is right. it just, you know, a passing trend that exactly. we're going to forget about? Because we tend to forget about a lot yeah. of things. Yes, I agree. You know, we're a very short-term memory <laughs> society, and it's very instant gratification sort of thing. And so I'm hopeful that we can continue it and move it and move it and move it. But you know what? We're a society that moves on very fast. Oh, yes. I mean, super I think, fast. I think it's actually, now that it's in full-on conversation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's a tipping point. I really do, because women's been de women have been dealing with this for since the beginning of time. I right. mean, and you know, yeah. you hear pockets. At, when I used to work for a company in an office and that sort of thing, you hear about things and you hear hearsay about what's going on in the office. And So it's been going on forever, but no one, it was always hush-hush. And now everyone's I think feeling more comfortable to to talk about it because it is, you know, across the board. It's in the media. I mm -hmm, mean, mm -hmm. you know, sad that it's still happening, obviously, right. but it's you know happening to the point where people are not now saying yes, yeah. me too, and it was me too twenty years ago, but it's still me too because yeah. we're yeah. all dealing with it. it. Doesn't matter when it happened. That this really isn't the like the one of the things that too. It's kind of like I think for a lot of us. Um, this has been the whole, especially like the bigger vague area mm -hmm. that falls under sexual harassment and misconduct. It's always been the way that we felt it was like, well, that's the price of being female. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's yeah. so that that I know. Right. <laughs> I mean, that shouldn't be. And now it's coming around where I feel like we're really having this conversation of no, there is not a price for being female. There is no price for being male. There is no price for being female. Yeah. And that that is like that thought process needs to be like washed away disregard and i want to just real quick yeah um so angel sabino gee i wonder where that came from um, <laughs> <laughs> um so where does that line get drawn i always feel like that it's a difficult point i've been with my wife since i was 16 so i don't even understand how any of this works and frankly i flirt with her all the time at work <laughs> um but for other men and yeah, women yeah. where does that line get drawn um, I think a really good place is, like, how would I feel if a man were acting like this, uh, you know, uh, this behavior um, with my daughter at work right? mm -hmm. or with my mom at work? Yeah, put I mean, yourself that's, in their shoes my wife if we exactly. didn't work together. <laughs> yeah, I'm like if another guy was – and it's just – and so this – so, Angel, since you're watching, um, this was something, and it's uh, – this kind of transitions us into, like, some of the backlash because some of the backlash that yeah. I've seen now because of Me Too and Time's Up – are there are these men because there was prior to this being a big thing there was um the big push for men to be mentoring women and that kind of thing um in the workplace for leadership mm -hmm. and, and everything um and now men are saying well oh my gosh i don't feel comfortable mentoring women mm -hmm. um in my workplace now because i and i just for me i was like so pump the brakes on that for just a second please because what were you what what is mentoring to you Right. Because I'm like, <laughs> well, right. what does what mentoring look like to you? Because I'm here. like, I, that mentoring I does not look like my mentoring. What they're saying is that they're fearful that yeah, even right. the slightest thing might cause her to feel uncomfortable. Right. right. And it and could be it just, yeah. And harassment. so could it be, yeah, is she going to come after me if I just even suggest let's do a lunch together? Yeah. Something like that. And I think that's what the men are kind of saying. It's like, well, I'm not sure what woman is going to get offended by what like i don't get offended by a lot of things but i know other women who get offended by very easily right, and quick things so we're all very different in that way right. as well like well, I what think would that be that's not sorry no no go ahead i think that that's more of a human communication aspect like we all communicate in different ways True. so you know actually understanding how somebody else is communicating and saying hey 
you know, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, just being upfront about it. it. Those are ways that we can have those meetings without it being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, it, and not seeing it as a male-female thing, but more as a human interaction right. and communication. That's a good right. point. Very good yeah, point. You know, just even asking. Um, I'm <laughs> like, the, the, I just, like, whatever happened to asking the question or, or setting, like, a, like, um, boundary, like your first meeting with somebody, like setting those boundaries, like, hey, this is what I'd like to do. How does that sound to you? Is this something that would be right. comfortable for you? That kind of thing. I mean, yeah, the first time it's going to be awkward. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, yeah, but yeah, isn't yeah, it yeah. better to have that uncomfortable conversation first? Right. You know? Um, I mean, sadly, not everyone knows how to say that, uh, sort of have that kind of conversation up front. Right. So, you know, that's a, that's a learning process to where you're comfortable with yourself enough to actually have a conversation with that and set parameters and expectations, that sort of thing. Because if, ha if you have a male boss and you want that person to be your, mm -hmm. your mentor, mm -hmm. you know, especially when you're like 20 something, just starting out right. in the world, you really don't know yourself most of the time right. Right. well enough to have that type of conversation. Because right. I, I know I didn't, and I'm a very strong person, you know, you know me. And um, at, at 25 years old, I couldn't have had that conversation with somebody. Right, yeah. Which is why all the, all the me too for me was in my twenties when I didn't know how to handle it. Mm. You know, I didn't know how to process it. Like, what is this? And so, um, so yeah, it's a learning process, I think. But I think hopefully now the younger generation are seeing what's happening and they're learning from it. And so they'll be more equipped when something happens to them at 25 years old. Yeah. Which, and as a parent, having conversations exactly. with your kids about it. Yeah, I think and that I, feeds into the times up thing as well. Yeah. Like the more aware everybody is of how not normal this behavior is, the more hopefully the less this happens. Exactly. Well, and I well, okay. So Mike and I had. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, so Melissa uh, chimed in. She says boundaries. Yes. Um, and uh, Sharika, I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of difficulty reading because the type's a little small. Uh, Sharika said, "Good point, Nancy." And then. Angel uh, commented back, he says, I've chosen to see it as um, you can hit on someone and be creepy or give someone a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely a difference. Um, I, <laughs> I would hope other men and women are aware enough to understand you shouldn't just walk up to someone and be creepy. Exactly. Um, but people surprise you, sadly, and not in a good way. Absolutely. And they don't even know they're creepy sometimes. That's the sad thing. I know. Like, they have no know idea. Being <laughs> no, there's, there's being socially awkward. But back to um, the, the point where, um, Leslie, you were talking about, like, you know, girls in their 20s. Um, that was a conversation that Mike and I had because, you know, like, because um, we were, it was right after I'd heard the podcast about uh, Aziz Ansari, mm -hmm. that incident. Um, and so he's like, you know, she always had the power. She could have left this, this. It's like at that point, it's like even in your 20s, even with all of the stuff that's going around and things like that, again, it, it's really being, I think, confident enough in yourself. And again, that whole like, I hate to say, but like being prepared because then, mm -hmm. because otherwise, I'm sure a big part yeah. of it, she was like, hey, I don't even know, is this really happening? Because you're spending a lot of time of like, is this really, is this really happening mm -hmm. right now? Like mm -hmm. surely I am misreading some cues right now, that kind of thing. And right. so I don't know, like, even though it's happening, like how do we better equip um, our 20 year olds and not just the girls, um, the, the guys as well of, of bringing them up and like, this is appropriate. This is inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. And I this is when this is appropriate. But when they're when, when they're young, they're also looking at a lot of videos, movies, a lot of oh, stimulus yes. outside of it. So a lot of them think that a lot of these kids who are putting on shows on YouTube are doing something that's correct or appropriate. They mm -hmm. don't, and they're learning it, and they don't yeah. realize that that's not right. Like I, I, my kids sometimes watch these YouTube videos of these guys that are doing like really funny, dumb stuff, and I have to continuously tell them like they are doing it for funny and for YouTube. That doesn't mean you can go outside and jump <laughs> off of the right. roof with your basketball because that's what they're doing. But I think they're seeing a lot of that outside of their home. Even, like, yeah, even like, if we're protecting them off of it. You Nowadays, um, I, which is kind of crazy to me because I was never like that, but there's a hookup culture where yes. you literally go to places just to just, hook yeah. up. So then yeah. how does, and to think that these are the kids that are now going out and being becoming the professionals yeah. and that are going out there in the workplaces, in the work environment. So they're taking that hookup mentality and culture now to the workplaces. So then it's like, where is that line drawn? And yeah. how do you then educate both sides, male and right. female, and saying, 
hey, that's not right. It might have been fun that one night in college, or it might have not been, but now you're in a workplace where you're supposed to be a professional. You're here to make money. Let's all be obviously very courteous to each other. Different and, codes yeah. of conduct, basically. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely has to be the same. Anna subject. has a good point. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, let's see here. I think when women are being believed, it will be easier for women to speak up. Amen. Yeah. Um, it's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Women speaking up or people respecting us enough to believe us um, first so that we speak out. And absolutely, I mean, that's a, that's a huge part of it. And so that's part of the backlash, too, um, that Mike and I had talked about because um, when all of the stories were coming up, you know, Matt Lauer's fight, you know, it, it yeah. sounds like, and what we're seeing on this side, you know, like what the media is showing us is, you know, these women came up, he got fired. Uh, Louis C.K., this came up, he got fired. And so I'm kind of like, I'm thinking that there's some stuff that came along in the background. Because right. I would like to, because I mean, there is, we do need to talk about. it is. Exactly. But I think we do need to acknowledge the fact that there is in our society and that it does need to be that, yes, wow, the, the way to, um, I think, believe and support the woman when she comes forward with the allegations is to say, that is something that needs to be investigated. Th this is a valid thing that needs to be investigated. That we do also, because there have been instances where men have been accused and been accused, um, falsely accused. Right. And so that, they, that we have in our society, the way that our system is set up is that, you know, that it is an allegation and that this does need to be proven but yeah. again the fact that we are going to support you yes we are going to check this we believe you enough to check this out exactly. not to dismiss you that kind of thing and i think that's a piece that needs to be in there as well it needs to not be you know like 19 women down the line thank you okay right. now oh now, now we'll, we'll check it out exactly, exactly. Like, no. so that's that's the thing about you know when they when the allegation happened and people were getting fired so quickly, mm -hmm. I'm sure there was already an yeah. investigation going no, on, but then yes. all of a sudden, so many And they were being protected the by time. their boards and their managers right. and mm -hmm. their Correct. assistants and their yeah. secretaries. Yep, so there's there was a, a code of whole, silence. Exactly. There so there was, was a, a whole team silence. protecting mm -hmm. that man from, you know, from all of these things. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It, I know. And so that, that's bringing up a, a point of, so like with the Time's Up, the hashtag Time's Up, uh, campaign and so again this was something that i didn't realize until um i was listening to um again by the way stuff my mom never told you it's a pretty cool uh pretty cool podcast um so because again what the media showed us is okay there's all these hollywood ladies they're all going to dress in yeah. black right. and, yeah, gonna yeah, 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 time's yeah. and so yay great and so you know it's this slacktivism and what i found out was that um it's it's not so they actually those women holly executives directors actresses um have that whole Time's Up movement is a place where they are, they've partnered up with, oh boy, now I can't remember the name of the um, legal association, but there's yes, a Women's yeah. Legal Association where they've partnered up, and they actually have, I think yeah. it's up to like $15 million yeah, they have, have a been fund. donated, yes, donated for, and it is oh. specifically for women who are in underrepresented industries, mm -hmm. so like the film industry, hospitality. The restaurant, um, hotel industry. Yes. They've got that and so salons. Yes, salons. Oh, okay. All of those places where there isn't a union there to protect mm -hmm. the workers. Um, where they can't afford a lawyer. Exactly. So they're going to help them fund those lawyers. Exactly. And I just, I was like, that's amazing. Yes. I'm like, I didn't realize that. that. That's yeah, I know. See, that's, that isn't talked about. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. one of the reasons why they don't come up and say anything is because they know that they're going to face a machine mm -hmm. and they don't have the system in place. You know, she's poor. She doesn't have money for her family. Right, she doesn't she know what's going on. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so Anna yeah, go just brought that up as oh, well. Oh, she so. did. Okay. Well, go ahead, go ahead and read it. Yeah, because oh, I don't have to be the author. <laughs> I don't have to be the only person reading. <laughs> um, Anna said, um, and we have to stop blaming the women for not speaking out. Amen. Um, I was having this conversation with someone about this topic, and they said, well, if these ladies would have uh, said something sooner, they would have saved these other women from having it happen to them, blaming the victim. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's like, okay, so, yeah, could they have spoken up? Well, yeah, sure, they could have spoken up. And then what's the repercussions for them speaking up? They lose their job, um, which then this is the, especially for women who are in the restaurants, hospitality, that kind of thing, in those labor industries. Now, not only yeah. am I losing my job, yeah. um, it's just yeah. like, now yeah. I don't have a which place they can to live. Which they can't afford to lose. Exactly. to me. The wheels were spinning in my head. Like, I don't know what to do. So I think the best thing is to create boundaries to where that doesn't happen to me again, although it's still not my fault, but... 
I don't know, put my bootstraps on and keep going and get another job. But yeah, I really appreciate you saying that because that's how I felt. I think we need to have resources and be mm-hmm. able to say, hey, let's talk about it. How can I help you instead yeah. of the let's other? Listen no, exactly. to each other. Yeah, let's just listen to each other, embrace each other with some compassion. Like I feel like that is so important nowadays. We don't look at each other with compassion anymore. It's always like judgment and it's always mm-hmm. like, well, what am I going to get from you? What are you going to get from me? Right. What's your, what's your so ulterior relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. thing. And I know. It is sad really sad. sad. And so I'm going to admit something. Uh-oh. So I know. I know, right? Because <laughs> I'm kind of like, I'm like, oh, my God. But Let it out. <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> I'll set you free. But it is, I know. But I mean, but it is. So it's it's for us to realize that, again, it it is something. To me, it was, it was the learning moment of this really is something that's been ingrained, not just in guys, but in women. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I was having a conversation with somebody, and they had, you know, the Olympics are going on and stuff like that, and so it was right after Sean White had gotten his gold medal. Okay. okay. And so then right after Sean White gets his gold medal, then what's in the media is a woman's come out about, you know, his sexual misconduct or whatever. And I'm not kidding you. My immediate thought was, well, isn't that timing interesting? Instead of being like, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, oh, so he just coincidentally won a gold medal, and now this is coming out. And I was like... Wow, that is really something that is ingrained in mm-hmm. in to our fiber of I immediately went to what's her ulterior motive? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I have no idea how long this allegation's been sitting out there. It's the media who probably picked it right. up, you know, and decided it like, been out okay, there for years. Yes, exactly. exactly. So but again, I was just so that's my that's my confession. Mm-hmm. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it still was. It was that whole thing of like and it's you know But I think we all do that yeah. at some point. Well, and that's part of the media nowadays anyway, that they they want shock factor, so they probably right. found something from ten years ago, waited. which is what they do and they, yeah. they mm-hmm. You know, they held it until they it, held yeah. it exactly, and then they they let put it out, out there was, as soon as something happens. Something they, good happens to this person. Right. They're so busy to rip when them down. they get the most mm-hmm. views and clicks, clicks right? Exactly. And make yeah. the most yeah. money. Clickbait. Exactly. <laughs> the clickbait. Exactly. It's all, exactly. Exactly. It's all exactly about exactly money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sad, and you know, money runs the world. Yeah, it absolutely does, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> so uh, that helps kind of like transition us into like what Brandy was talking about. Not necessarily my confession. Um, but, uh, I thought you were going to confess you harassed somebody. <laughs> I know. I'm like, ooh. Did you, did oh you harass somebody? <laughs> well, don't ask no. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like, Y'all were like, together. That's he's like, okay. I probably get harassed all the time. <laughs> um, um, but so it, it's getting into now some things that we can do. Because, again, the, the show is about, um, it's talking about topics that um, impact women and then trying to find the ways, the solutions to make that change. Um, and so one of the resources, um, it, like with the hashtag, the time's up, they actually also set up a website. Um, and Mike, if you could do me a favor and type this into um, the comment section. Um, so it's timesupnow.com forward slash, and there's the hashtag, resources hyphen anchor and that is a fantastic resource so if you've got a friend who um, has talked about you know and they've had this experience and they're not really sure um, what resources where they can go that kind of thing like I, I sent it off to Brandy um, it's it's a re- it's a place and then it's got links to other organizations like the EEOC that kind of thing where you can get some additional help and assistance. And you said that the website was like really user friendly and everything. Very, it was very easy. First of all, thank you for sending that. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I had like a burden moment on my heart until I had, because I didn't think there was an option for me. And right. and then once I sent it, I was like, wow, I, that, I feel peace. And um, cause I just didn't think that that was available for me. So um, yeah, it was very easy. It wasn't really, uh, I didn't, it was just enough information for them to, to that they needed. I don't feel like I was like a snake or a rat or giving out a bunch of information right. on, on uh, you know, so I wasn't worried about that. And maybe they'll, they take up to 10 days to contact you, but it was super easy to do. I felt very safe in doing it. Um, the information secured. Uh, so even if it's a first step, you know, if you've been harassed, it's a very, it's a great first step to take and you don't have to worry about um, the information coming back to you or getting out there or anything like that. So I felt very safe and very secure. Awesome. So. Very good. So, and again, like I said, that is that is something too that we just again. I didn't know the resource was out there because uh, I'll Me be honest. Either. When you when you shared it, and you were like, I'm "Like, yeah, dude, that's a situation that wow, what do you do?" Mm-hmm. So that was I was yeah. I felt very good to be able to share that with you. 
Yeah, um, yeah, it's really cool. I think everyone needs to know about this this the site. We all know someone. Yeah, that's exactly. That kind of environment. Right. Absolutely. So. Um, some other things that for me um, that I think really needs to be a part of this is that honest and truly, we need guys. We need guys to be a part of this. Uh, it can't be just us right. ladies Absolutely. standing up and saying that's inappropriate behavior. Uh, unfortunately, I think it really will hold a lot more weight if we have guys in the workplace who, when they see it happening, to stop the guy and go like, that's inappropriate. You shouldn't be yeah. acting like that. Right. Um, I, that's, you know, like I said, I, it should be enough for us to go like, no, that's not cool. But in reality, I think that needs to be where we have guys who come and do it. Um, also, March 6th. Does everybody know what happens mm -hmm. on March 6th? The primaries. The primaries. Yes. So get out and vote. Know your candidates. Know the issues. Um, and use your voting power. And we are 51% of the population, ladies. That's right. Yeah. So we have a lot of voting power. We also have a lot of power in our pocketbooks. Yes. Women make up 85% of the purchasing decisions. So look at the companies where yes. you are spending your dollars. Look and see, do they have, um, do they have gender equity, uh, equity um, kind of represented in their leadership? What kind of... Um, environment do they support do they have that kind of thing so there's there's some things that we can do where this can be a long lasting kind of change, change that we're doing That's you know because right. as who i don't remember who said it like leslie i think you said it's just you know it's money yeah you mm -hmm. know it's all wrapped up in money and we have a lot of power with our dollars and where we spend them absolutely. and we don't realize it as a group a lot of women don't understand that but we have a lot of power mm -hmm. absolutely financial power well, there's a lot of people who are trying to like make sure that we don't know, yes. uh, but we <laughs> cut on to them. <laughs> exactly, and then um, just like the women of Hollywood are doing, um, they recognized the power, the influence, and the privilege that they have, and they are using it to help others. Um, and so, recognizing the privilege and the influence that potentially you have as an individual. And using that to help others, to uh, mentor someone who is maybe in, an, in your workplace that's an underrepresented um, population and mentor them to bring them up within the leadership, that kind of thing. That's one of the reasons why um, doing, I, I really believe in doing the Nerdy Girl Success uh, mm -hmm. talk show, uh, the Define Her Story talk show, and moving it into, um, FYI, moving it into being a podcast as well. So that way, this however small my platform is and however small yeah. our influence uh within this panel is we uh as a as a group of women we want to make sure that we are using our privilege and our platform and our influence out there to help other people so absolutely mm -hmm. yeah like anything Gloria Aldred said um, we have a social responsibility so we should be taking up that responsibility and doing our part Absolutely. Totally. Agree. Do you want to tell them about the? Because I, I'm like the only person on the planet who doesn't have Netflix, <laughs> so I can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. I know. No, 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 I, know, I, know. <laughs> oh, I know. But do you want to tell them a little bit about? So, like, if they have it, if they, they are the rest of people who have Netflix, what the the documentary is. Yeah. Um. So I, I can't remember what it was called. Um, it's just called All Red. All Red. Okay. So All Red. It's about Gloria All Red, who is a lawyer. Um, that works for women or social rights. Um, she's a social rights activist and she represents a lot of the women that have been um, harassed or assaulted, especially in the workplace. Um, and she is just incredible in what she has done and her life's work and what she's put onto it and put yeah. into it. So it, it's an amazing um, movie show thing that uh, documentary. Documentary. documentary yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I encourage everyone to go watch it, and it was definitely eye-opening um, just to see also how long she's been doing this. Um, mm -hmm. So it was crazy. Um, and Angel saying it's I not know. possible not having Netflix. I, like, I, I saw that. So I left. I'm like, apparently it is possible. Yeah. There you apparently go. It is. I don't have a TV, and I still have Netflix. I know. Exactly. I know. I know. Wow. I know. I'm one of the. I'm one of the. I, There's some good stuff on Netflix. So I do. I, I know. I'm like. I had it for a while, and then you know we did the whole like streamlining the budget, and that was the one. One not the one, but it was one of the things that you know we. <sighs> 
know. Longmire. Oh, I know. Okay. okay. I know. That lady's a trooper all red. I know. Yeah, Very is, cool. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things, too, that I forgot to do last time that I wanted to do this time, I just remembered to make sure that I was like, so if you have anything that's going on, up and coming, that kind of thing, to share with the audience. So, Leslie, do you have anything, that any specials or anything that you want to let people know about? Uh, well, it's been, it's in, I'm in the middle of my busy season with the travel industry, and it's just a great time to plan. Right now, there's a ton of options for people looking to travel in, in the summer or fall. So that's the time. So there's, um, it doesn't matter if it's a cruise, if it's a land-based vacation, what have you. There's just a lot of pro promotions going on right now. So January through April is usually when a lot of the great promotions for the rest of the year happen. What Where website can they find you at? Oh, well, my website is jetsetterscruises.com. And on Facebook as well, it's CP Jet Setters. So okay. thank you. Nancy, you got anything going on? Um, I personally don't have any specials, um, but I do want to just take this opportunity to talk about cybersecurity. Um, that's obviously something that is very important to any yeah. kind of company. Um, so that is one thing that we specialize in and we want to try and help. Um, so I am looking for any opportunity to speak on cybersecurity and to help any, um, any companies that I can as far as what they can do and how they can help their employees with it. So you can learn more about my company at sabinocomptech.com and it is so long, so I'm going to spell it out. <laughs> Sabino, mm -hmm. like my last name, S-A-B-I-N-O-C-O-M-P, as in compliance, and then T-E-C-H, tech, um, dot com. See, and here this whole time I Ooh. thought comp was for computer. Me too. <laughs> That's what I was just <laughs> about compliance. That's a company. Oh, no. <laughs> Alicia, what you got Oh, for on? me, I just yeah. want to say that we're booking events and we're booking classes for April. Wow. March is almost full, so if you want to do something for April, that's a really great month. Um, people really enjoy the Easter time. It's just a really fun time for us. But yeah, coming up in March, we have a few classes. We have a big spring, spring launch, mm -hmm. a spring launch event with beauty launch as well. So we're going to be doing something really fun. That would be March second, yeah, and then. Alicia and I are in some planning. Yeah, we're planning for something for uh, for it, launching Women's History Month. Yes. Right. So yeah, look out for that. Yes. So our spring launch party here. So you get kind of first dibs on spring that's coming in. Also, I'm doing a kind of social media makeover campaign. I need before and after pictures. I don't have them. People always want to know what's in your portfolio. I don't have a portfolio. I didn't need one. So I kind of need one now. Um, anyway, so I think right now I have like 70 women that are interested. So my team and I are going to get on that. You just... You come in here and we get you, we get your mug shot. Sorry, but that's part of the deal. And uh, he goes on social media, and then we have the after picture too. So if you're interested cool. in that, please contact me, and we'll get you it's on. A the great list. deal, y'all. Cool. Yes, complimentary. It's usually a 125 deal to get your makeup with me. So get get in my before and after portfolio. So. Awesome. Um, very cool. Well, everyone, thank you so much for, uh, oops, sorry, for tuning in and uh, engaging in the conversation with us. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you around. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.